Hello, have you ever wanted to go stealth camping but you're just a little bit too afraid of getting caught? Well, one of the things that most often gets people caught is poor light discipline and using a light at night that can be seen four kilometers away. So in this video, what I want to do is teach you some basic skills taught in the military to see better using nothing but the Mark One human eyeball, so you don't need any special equipment or anything. But what I'll also do, go through some you know, other techniques you can use for when you do need to use a light, how you can use it more stealthily so it's less likely to be seen. So the first technique for your light not being seen at night is quite simply not to use one and rely on your natural night vision instead. Now, if you go into the dark, it'll take about two to three minutes before you start to notice a difference in how well you can see, but it'll actually take between 45 minutes and two hours before your eyes properly adjust. And that's why most people don't actually understand how well they can see at night is because they simply just don't give it enough time. In order to understand how to use your eyes better at night, it's important to understand just a little bit about the biology first. But bear with me, this won't take too long. Your eyes have two types of light sensitive cells. Cones directly at the back of the eye, which are uniquely suited for daylight and have been adapted for that purpose. And they give you a nice sharp image. But then you also have around the edge of your eye, something called rods, which are much better suited for working at night. Now the rods are about a hundred times more light sensitive than the cones are, but unfortunately they're not strong. So they don't give you as a sharp an image. And what you'll find is the colors are much more muted as well. Now, because the rods aren't as strong, what you'll find is if you stare at an image for more than four to 10 seconds, you'll find that that image will start to fade and you'll lose it as well. So how does that little bit of biology help us? Well, what it means is because your cones at the, at the back of your eye and the more light sensitive rods around the edges, you see better at night is if you don't stare directly at something, but aim off instead. So instead of looking directly at the camera, you'd look slightly at an angle instead. And what that does is that means that the light hits the rods rather than the cones and effectively uses that part of your eye which is more sensitive more efficiently. Now what the military teach is to aim off and rather than look directly at something and what they recommend doing is to scan the area in a figure of eight. So instead of looking directly at something and just scanning left to right you're looking like this in a figure of eight pattern as you as you walk around um, and what that does is two things. The first one is you're constantly aiming off rather than looking directly so you're using those rods but it also constantly change the angle so that you're not using the same rods consistently and that gives the rods time to rest because don't forget they tire after four to ten seconds so the best way to see at night other than letting your eyes adapt for 45 minutes to two hours is to actually use those rods effectively by scanning in a figure of eight another technique you can use if you think there's somebody maybe creeping around where you're camping is to get low to the ground and you know use silhouette your advantage because getting low not only does it mean you're going to be lost on the the forest floor uh, where you can't be seen but it raises them and puts them potentially against the skyline as well now if you can raise somebody up so they're against the skyline you've got a much better chance of seeing them than they have of seeing you so that's another good way of using your natural eyes to kind of see what's going on around you without actually giving your position away using a torch because that adaption process to night vision does take so long 45 minutes to two hours. It's really important that once you have made that adaption, that you actually try and preserve your night vision as much as possible by avoiding white light, because that will reset you back into daylight mode. Now, if you do need a little bit more light to see by, because you can't quite make something out, what you can do is use a red light instead, because red light is on a much narrower spectrum than white light is. It won't destroy your night vision like a white light will. So that is something you can always use. Just bear in mind that even a really bright red light can still destroy your night vision. Just try and use the minimum level of illumination necessary to complete the task um, and then go back to dark if you can. Unfortunately, a red light isn't always suitable for the task at hand because some tasks do need a high degree of colour differentiation and a single colour source like a red light doesn't allow you to see the different colours well. So for example, first aid or map reading where you need to see lots of different colours, you really do need to use a white light. So in that case, what you should try and do is use the minimum level of illumination necessary. One, because it will not destroy your light vision as much, but also because you're less likely to be seen as well. Now, one thing you can do is take a small torch like this, wrap the end in masking tape, and just have a small pinprick instead. So rather than having the whole light uh, shine through, you just have a little pinprick of light, and this is much more effective because it is bright enough to read a map with, uh, but it's not so bright that it's going to destroy your night vision instantly and also you know it's much harder to be seen so it's a lot more stealthy than having kind of just a naked light shining 
it's a good idea if you are using white light to close your dominant eye and also cover it with your hand as well because quite often if it's a bright light it can get through your eyelid and that will also degrade your night vision now i was taught as an instructor in cadets to cover my sort of right eye which is my dominant eye uh, and cover it with my left hand and what that does is it allows my dominant hand and keeps that free for firing a weapon uh, but it's just as handy if you're walking a dog and need to be able to control your dogs as well so using your non-dominant uh, hand to cover your dominant eye is a really good technique to uh, protect your night vision if you get caught by a bright light or you're kind of using a white light yourself now in the woods at night there are still lots of situations where you will need to use a light uh, but there's still lots of techniques we can use in order to minimize how visible that is to other people now the first one is just really common sense and that is to only use a torch that's just bright enough for the task at hand and not use one of these crazy bright torches now you can get these big massive sort of 2000 lumen torches which are fantastic but maybe just have that as a backup in your bag in case of emergency and for your normal task light just keep it as dim as possible Another technique to use is to use a red light as opposed to a white light because red light at night is a little bit harder to see. Another really important technique is to shield the lights so that only the glow is shown rather than the direct light. Remember, even red lights, cars and bicycles use those to be seen at night, so they definitely can be seen. But if you just show the glow as opposed to the direct light, it's definitely a lot harder to see at night. Another really important consideration while using a light while stealth camping is how high off the ground it is. And in general, you should try and keep that light as low to the ground as possible. And ideally, if you're doing something like map reading, then you should crouch down and use that light on the floor where the natural vegetation is going to screen it from other people and make it much harder to see. If you do need to use a light while mobile, it's a good idea to kind of walk with the torch in your hand, extended as far as possible in your hand so that it is as low to the ground as possible and keep that torch pointing downwards and again that will hopefully be screened by a lot of the local vegetation and make you harder to find at night now if you do uh, need to walk around one of the, the worst things you can have is a head torch because the head torch makes that light as high as it can possibly be it's going to be above all the low level vegetation and it's going to be a lot more visible to other people so ideally i would say when you're stealth camping while head torches are very convenient they should be avoided for stealth reasons so once again, hope you thought that was useful. Until next time.